<laughs> my lips are starting to get numb. I'm having trouble talking. They feel like I've been to the dentist. <laughs> Here we are again, back in the garage for another edition of the Garage Lectures. This will be number four. The previous ones were on the mammal teeth and skulls. And then we did one on the life of an animal trail, moose, bears, wolverines, wolves, like that. Then did one on snakes using uh, my wife's ball python breeding operation. And this one is gonna be about owls. So I'm out here in Quebec in the middle of winter. It's minus 20 Celsius outside right now. And I'm on the hunt for owls in the area where I live in not the southernmost part of Quebec, but still fairly south, north of Montreal a little bit. There are a lot of owls that are present, particularly in winter. So they will either migrate here from further north or they will stay resident here for the entire winter. And these include uh, great gray owls, barred owls are very common, uh, great horned owls, uh, northern sawwet owls, a little guy, really cute, um, snowy owls will migrate from the Arctic down here and spend the winter around the Montreal area. And then you can also sometimes have uh, eastern screech owls and long-eared owls and some other owls. So I'm out searching for them to take videos and uh, photographs of them. And right now I'm in a small forest patch between several different roads, looking around in hopes of finding either a great horned or a, um, or I'm told that there might be long-eared owls in here too. So let's keep looking. So I'm going to talk mainly about Quebec owls, although I've also seen owls in many other places in North America and South America, including things I can't show you video for, which would be burrowing owls and spotted owls and barn owls and boreal owls. When I was growing up, my parents were naturalists and they would like to um, apply for permits to keep roadkill birds and then they could use those for teaching purposes in schools. And so my parents uh, bequeathed to me a couple of these birds. And so I have here a great horned owl and a uh, northern sawwet owl. And so I can show you a couple of things on these and then take you outside in nature, show you what's happening right now with all these owls in Quebec uh, and talk about some of the biology and the ecology of the system. So great horned owl, um, most obvious thing perhaps is these striking, quote, horns, or in some species they will call them ears. People argue over what these horns slash ears are for. Some people think it might be for species recognition. Some people think it's for scaring off predators because it looks like mammal ears. Uh, other people think that um, it breaks up the silhouette, causes an, causes an outline to be broken up and therefore they're more cryptic. I think it's probably more likely sexual selection where it's a signal between males and females that has something to do with either quality or attractiveness, but who knows. Now, owls, of course, have this really cool front facing disc face, which is specially designed to be able to detect sounds and movement, particularly at night. So owls have very big eyes. They use those eyes for scanning the ground, uh, either while flying slowly or looking from a perch. And they have ears. These are not the ears. Uh, these are just feather tufts, but their ears are underneath here. And those ears are asymmetric, which is thought meaning that one is in a different position than the other. And that's thought to help with the detection of sound. So they'll sit in a tree, rotate their head. They can rotate their head 270 degrees around, spin it almost all the way around and look up and down and watch for prey and listen for them. Owls are specialized nocturnal predators. So they do most of their hunting at night, 
when they can take advantage of their exceptional eyesight and also their extremely good hearing. And they can hear things scurrying around and sometimes see them uh, even just in the slightest of light. So that means that during the day, most owls just kind of chill and you can often get quite close to them and they just pretty much ignore you. So people really like to go look for owls in winter because you get a really good view. They're often a big, cool animal and they're just not afraid at all. Sometimes year after year after year, the same owl or group of owls will come to one particular place. <clears throat> and in this park in Montreal, actually Laval, there is a year after year, a screech owl right up there. <clears throat> Screech owls are kind of cool because they basically hang out in a hole and they just sit there all day long waiting for the night to come when they can do their hunting. Owls have a have a very particular curved beak. It's curved downward. Obviously it's for ripping and tearing flesh. But the reason why it's curved downward is suggested to be because it uh, keeps it out of the line of sight and therefore gives them more vision downward. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. Owls are really quiet when flying. And it was thought at one point that it was because of these very fine edges and soft edges on the primaries. Studies suggest that maybe that's not the case, but um, regardless, they're very good at flying silently, which will therefore not alert small mammals to their presence and their impending doom. This is not my video, but it gives a good picture of an owl in flight. Owls live in very cold environments. It's bloody cold out here, man. It's like minus 20, not counting the wind chill, maybe minus 30 with the wind chill. They're supposed to get to minus 30 tonight without the wind chill. I think if I was to spend the night out here, the only way I'd survive would be to keep moving so that my body would keep generating metabolic heat through muscle activity. I think if I just sat still, I would. I have to leave my GoPro inside my coat. Otherwise it's too cold and it won't run. And yet owls, incredibly, just sit there all day long. They fly through the air. Think of the wind chill factor there. Of course, the way they do that is with exceptionally good insulation provided by their feathers. They have this wonderful feather insulation, including some wonderful down underneath here, as well as fueling their activity and metabolic heat by consuming lots of meat during the winter, in particular in the form of small mammals and sometimes birds. They will also often incubate their eggs in the winter. For many owls, the hunting in winter can actually be better than even in the early spring. So they start breeding really early. And in fact, in the top of this tree here, or about halfway up, in a little crotch in the tree, uh, is a great horned owl incubating babies or incubating eggs and it's only January 20th. So they'll start breeding early so that they can take advantage of the spring and kill a lot of the small mammals and birds that might be having young in the spring and so they actually breed uh, in the early spring or late winter. Most owls nest in cavities or holes in trees and as a result they really need other animals to open those up for them, especially woodpeckers, like pileated woodpeckers. So there's usually a shortage or at least a high competition for nesting sites, which may be one of the factors that limits uh, owls, owl populations, one of them. The other one being the availability of food. So people will often put up uh, nesting boxes for owls. So here's one that was in this beach, this old beech tree here. One of the biggest uh, trunks in this little forest patch. And that was attached to it and it fell off uh, sometime in the summer, this summer. But there's no signs anything's nested in it. So I don't think anything's nested in there, although it's hard to say for sure. Owls have spectacularly sharp claws. 
and there's four toes and these are used for for grabbing prey and holding on to them particularly when diving down really quickly and grabbing on to make sure they don't let go they also pierce the prey and presumably kill the prey too in winter the owls are often hunting underneath the snow and they can either see the snow moving or more likely hear the sound of animals underneath the snow from a perch and they swoop down and put their talons down into the snow in exactly the location where they think it's going to be, grab it and pull it up. And when that happens, you can often see their wing marks on the snow. So check this out. And you can see the, the blood of a dead animal there, some small rodent. Owls can eat many things from all kinds of different birds to mammals to frogs to lizards, anything really. But what they really like in particular is small mammals like voles and mice and shrews and things like that. Before it get, the snow gets really deep, the rodents will run around on the surface. And so you can see these cool tracks here where uh, bowl or mouse or something is coming out of the house underneath the snow and motoring over the snow in hopes of finding food outside and so owls will hunt rodents out of the snow on top of the snow another small mammal owls really like is squirrels so I've seen uh, plenty of owls holding on to squirrels they've been munching on. Squirrels, of course, are also above the snow where they tend to come down out of the trees so that they can forage often on their caches. So here you can see that a squirrel has been jumping down from this small tree, coming over here, digging up its caches, and then fleeing back up the tree and up into safety. So that's an Eastern cottontail. And in this case, I don't know if it's been killed by a owl, but it might've been. Owls come in all different sizes and shapes. The great horned owl looks like one of the biggest. And that's because uh, it has a lot of feather insulation, but great gray owls and snowy owls are actually bigger. But there's also a set of very small owls, including this northern sawwet owl here. These are really cute little guys, same general style, big uh, rounded face, uh, asymmetrical ears, big eyes in relation to their body, small down curved beak, Lots of insulation, sharp claws. Northern saw white owls have a, have a really cool extra behavior. Sometimes they'll catch more prey in a given night that they can, than they can eat in that night. So what they will do is they'll stash them. And if they don't catch prey the next day, they'll come back and pull them up. Sometimes I've found some just dead voles. This is what the voles look like here. So I found this guy just now out on a path in the woods. I don't know why it's here, but presumably somebody grabbed it or I don't know why it's here. It doesn't look like anybody's eaten any part of it. You know, maybe boreal owls or other owls have just dropped them or left them. But boreal, uh, saw wet owls will stash them and then come back later and kind of like pseudo incubate them to warm them up before they eat them. I have a really great video of a saw wet owl that's sitting on its perch. It has a prey in, in, in its claws. Maybe it caught that day. Maybe it's the second one it caught that day. It wants to eat another one. Maybe it's warming it up. Um, meanwhile, it's just sitting there not eating it. And presumably it's because it's trying to get rid of the owl pellet that it has already in it. So they tend to swallow their prey whole, digest what they can, and then regurgitate, spit up the undigested parts. So this owl is sitting there holding on to 
uh, its next meal in one claw while trying to regurgitate its previous meal. And the owl pellet came out and kind of got stuck on a, and it got stuck on a branch. So it was sort of perched between the, the mouth of the owl and the branch and not falling off. And I think the owl was just so sleepy and out of it that it wasn't really paying much attention, but eventually kind of shook its head and the owl pellet fell away. And presumably it would have then gone on to eat the, uh, to eat the next one. You can figure out what the owl has been eating just by looking at the owl pellet that it's regurgitated. There's actually people that go around into barns and pick up owl pellets and sell them for a couple dollars a piece to these biological supply companies so they can be then sold to colleges for dissection. So we've got a couple owl pellets here. They are from barn owls, which are much more common and much more easier to find the locations to collect them so that they're preferred by collectors. I don't have any videos of barn owls. Uh, and in addition, I just want to point out that they've been sterilized to prevent any potential problems such as hantavirus. Uh, and we just have to soak them a little bit first to get rid of a solution that basically hardens them up a bit and makes them a bit more solid. And so we'll do that and then we'll take a look and see what's inside. Gonna need reading glasses for this job. Okay, here we go. So you can see there's one jaw already. <gasps> Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Look at that. Okay. The two lower jaw bones here, here, and here. And you have the skull here. The skull, the top of the skull case kind of fell off. And then you have two femurs here and a tibia and fibula. The other bones will almost certainly be in the fur. But our main goal here right now is to try and understand what it ate. And it looks like, well, it's a rodent for sure. It's a fairly large rodent, but it looks like it's probably a mouse, which wouldn't be too atypical for a barn owl in a barn. Pellet number two. Here we go. Okay, what do we got? Oh, well, there's the other. Oh, here's the skull. You know what? This has more than one. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. The two lower... There's three. Huh. There's four. Craziness. There's at least four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's at least four critters because there's eight lower jaws. I found three skulls. And they're a bit different, so I'm going to look at them under the dissecting scope and see if I can tell what they are. I had to bring in the expert. It's my wife, Heather. She's uh, done these labs before, and so she's checking out. we got four skulls to look at, and uh, she's going to let us know if there are anything different in there and what they might be. Okay, so the three on the left came out of one pellet, and they look like they're voles, and the one on the right... Came out of the other pellet by itself, and it looks like a deer mouse. And might as well end with a nice little walk through the forest. And I look forward to seeing you in the next garage lecture. Who knows what it'll be about? I don't. Here's something really cool. When it's quite cold out like it is right now, the breath from animals in their burrows or in their holes will come out and condense when it comes outside into frost. So check this thing out. So there's definitely something in there. I can even smell its breath a little bit. <laughs>